the global economy uh, is, uh, has a lot of momentum. Uh, last year, uh, all the major economies registered very good growth. Uh, the United States had 2.3%. Uh, uh, Eurozone, Euro, people think Eurozone has been in a recession for a long time, had 2.5%. And Japan had 1.6%. India, as you know, 6.5%. And China, 6.9%. All these numbers are very impressive by uh, regional standards. But if you watch news, the good news is not reflected there. The news reportings usually tell you that the people are not happy. There are problems, like a uh, trade war. Now we're talking about a trade war. The uh, uh, anti-globalization. We're talking about uh, uh, the potential for another financial crisis. Now, why, why, uh, we, why are we living in this kind of world? Even when we have a good growth, people are not happy. This is something that I've been watching for a long time. We have the wrong econ model for managing the economy. If you look at what happened last year, it is clear that the economic growth is being, being led by financial markets, not the other way around. When we go to school, we know that uh, no, the textbooks teach you that the financial markets reflect economic fundamentals. When the economies do well, financial markets do well. But that hasn't been the case in the last few years. Instead, even policymakers are talking about economy will do well because the financial markets have been doing very well. It's the other way around. You look at what happened in the, in, in, let's give you an example, like the United States, because the United States has good numbers. The US market was up 25% last year, stock market, and the GDP up 2.3%. In terms of the, monetary value expansion. The stock market expanded by 14 times as much as the economy. So coming back to who's happy, who's not. It's not what you got in the economy that made you happy. It's, it's about what you got in the stock market. Most people are not in the stock market. So 2.3% uh, hardly matters to them after kind of a bad economy for so many years. Why would they be, they be happy? But you see that uh, every, every day we report somebody is, is uh, uh, richer by another billion dollars, right? So this is where the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the first uh, bad side effect from managing the economy through financial inflation is rising inequality. Okay, rising inequality. Why the inequality has been rising in the world in the last 10 years? You just look at the billionaires in the world. The billionaires in the world are mostly from finance or internet. Okay, in the financial market, both are really driven by cheaper money. Financial guys get rich because as the price is being inflated. Okay, it's not because they what they have done for the economy. This is very different from like uh, in the uh, in the eighties in Japan when people who create Toyota to create Panasonic, uh, Sony, they became rich. Or in the United States in the nineteen twenties, uh, the people who created uh, automobile companies or, or or the steel mills they became rich. Now we the people become rich because. They are at the right place at the right time. Somehow, the tide rolls under their feet. They become rich. So this is where uh, this kind of a, there's a difference in income in a, uh, wealth inequality. When the rich guy is rich because he created something very big, and he takes a big slice of that, like Bill Gates and, and Steve Jobs, it's, it has no, it's, it, it is beneficial for the economy. When the economy is not growing, somebody is becoming very rich. You have to be very suspicious. The guy must be taking something from somebody, you know? We, wo we, worship, we worship internet guys. What do internet guys do? You know, the, uh, we have computers everywhere except in the economic productivity. There is no productivity there. When people are watching their mobile phones, how could they be productive? So we are now the, the whole world is the, the, the seven billion people in the world. They all become phone zombies. 
So the, I, don't, I doubt that the economy will do very well in that kind of technology. So this worship of this in, internet technology is, 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 uh, is, uh, is really bad. So first thing, side effect is that uh, the financial market-led growth is bad for, in, uh, is, is bad for inequality, inequality. It makes societies less equal. This is a major contributor to the Western uh, uh, this uh, anti-globalization sentiment. You look at the com countries that are, are less kind of uh, into finance, like Japan and uh, Germany. They haven't grown faster than the US, but they have much better societies. Why is that? Because they, 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 they don't let uh, their financial, financial, financial markets not so developed. They don't let you speculate. And in this kind of society, CEOs are not paid a lot of money. In the, in, while in markets, in economies with a kind of a strong stock market, CEOs are paid a lot of money. So this is where I think we have to think about, uh, is, the, is there all right to manage the economy with the finance, right? So this is one thing about internally increasing inequality. Internationally, this financial, financial markets led growth also very bad. Why? We talk about an imbalance. What, what is imbalance? Imbalance is East Asia has, has big surplus, and Western economies have deficits. And uh, Donald Trump complains about it all the time. A major contributing factor is financial bubbles. Why? Uh, I've been looking at the, how, how the financial bubble uh, influences the economy. It is different in the East versus in the West. In the West, financial bubbles encourage people to consume to spend the money. In the East, the financial bubbles encourage people to invest more. It's just the nature of the things. So every bubble leads to what? Leads to more investment in the East and more consumption in the West and a big imbalance, more imbalance. And people, uh, then Trump becomes less happy. You know, Trump is being, uh, the stock market up 25% and he's cutting taxes. So the, the uh, encouraging people to spend more money, then they, the budget, the current deficit goes through the roof. It goes up and more and more. So there, there's more, 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 more reason for trade war. He's talking about uh, uh, no, uh, 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 no, uh, tariffs on this and that. So, uh, so financial market led, uh, managing the economy with the financial markets is not sustainable. It, its side effects are just destabilizing. In the short term, you get a little bit of growth, 2%, 3%, but in the long term, you get a, a, a lot of problems. So if this, this model is not sustainable, uh, how this thing is going to, to go down? Yeah, we, it's been like, uh, this thing has been going on for 30 years. Like uh, I used to see, uh, when I was working, uh, working on Wall Street, I used to see all the guys, like uh, 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 big fund managers, and uh, they told me, they kept saying, this thing can go on forever, right? So bubble after bubble, this thing can go on forever. So financial guys love bubbles, you know? So, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, <clears throat> it's been 30 years since, since uh, 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 Greenspan came to power. 30 years, it's we've been going one after another. Uh, so this one will end, but after this one, could we have another one? So there are two questions. When this one is gonna end? The other is that, uh, are we gonna have another one, all right? So, uh, <clears throat> I, I think that this one has been going on for 10 years, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, since 2008. Uh, we, now, this one is somewhat different from the previous ones. The, the previous one was driven by markets. This one's been driven by, by governments. Yeah. You know, quantitative easing. The, uh, the Federal Reserve in, it expands the balance by $3.6 trillion. The US budget deficit. Now, even when the economy is growing like that, one trillion dollars, trillion dollar deficit for, uh, uh, for as, as far as your eyes can see. Okay, China's money supply quadrupled in 10 years. Yeah, so it's all government has been doing that. It's not the market. So that's why this bubble has been lasting so long because of the market. But I see that uh, there's a weakness in this thing. It is what is that uh, we, we see in, in the, uh, both the US and, and China are tightening. Why are they tightening? They're tightening. They're scared, okay? They're scared. But China is, uh, China is tightening the property market. 
the, the property bubble is really worries the government about uh, the potential for crash. You know, any, uh, any tier one city has land value more than the whole of the land value in the United States. So it's just one city, right? So, uh, so the government is, is, is really, really worried. So they are, they're tightening the property market. Uh, the, the, the money supply in China is for the first time is falling below the economic growth rate. Okay, last year, uh, the nominal GDP expanded by 11% and the money supply about the same. But this year, the money supply is rising at uh, 8%. So obviously, this is tightening. Okay, and the United States, you look at the interest, the bond yield is uh, rising above inflation rate for the first time. <laughs> for the first time in 10 years. And uh, it's, it's not a very dead high, but at least it, it, it's, it's threatening uh, the bubble. And uh, Donald Trump is not, hap uh, happen, uh, not helping. The budget deficit is going to grow from uh, 600 some $50 billion last year to about a trillion dollars. So there's a lot more demand for capital in the market. And then the U.S. savings rate is not going to rise. So all this extra deficit has to be funded by foreign capital. That means what? The U.S. interest rate has to rise. So that is, uh, so this is a kind of a given thing. So you give it some time, the bond yield in the United States will rise over 4%. So the, the twin forces that are, that's going happening in China and in the United States, I believe, will lead to uh, 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 this bubble going down next year. No, it's, it's gradual. It's, it's next year something is, is going to happen, right? And, uh, and uh, this thing has been going on for 10 years. Usually, on average, it goes on for six to seven years. So already, it's been much longer than, than what we have seen before. So, uh, so I think this thing is, uh, is going to go down uh, uh, next year. So if you think this year, the market is, uh, I think, is going to go up and down. And I think we have already seen the high already. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, because people still think the trend will continue. So they always, every time it goes down, people will come back to buy. Uh, so, but the liquidity, liquidity is not there anymore. So you cannot get new highs. So we go, we're going to go have this uh, up and down uh, for, for 12 months. Then one day, people realize uh, the, it's, the trend is not going to continue. Then they cut and run. That's, that's, when, uh, then that's when it pops, OK? So uh, the, uh, could we, uh, could we uh, now after these pops, what, what, what would happen? What are the, what are we create another bubble? It's possible. It is entirely possible. The, uh, the, the ultimate source, uh, the, the reason why we have bubbles is because the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency. And the people in, all over the world, especially in East Asia, believe in the dollar. So you can overprint the dollar. When you overprint the dollar, obviously you create excess liquidity. And especially we have this uh, gl weird global monetary system. The dollar is the reserve currency, but it's supported by East Asian countries with their currencies essentially pegged to the dollar. And East Asia is where production and savings happen. So the dollar is kept afloat by East Asia. So the, 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 the Fed can, feels like it can print the dollar with, with no consequence. So when the dollar flows to East Asia, East Asia's monetary system expands even more than in the United States. So this is a kind of a turbo mon mon monitoring machine that's been going on for a long time. So as long as this machine uh, stays, it will, it, uh, the bubbles will come. So the sign of the bubble stops is what? When Chinese currency goes up like the Japanese yen in the 1980s. As long as China does not appreciate its currency, all the East Asian currencies will not appreciate. And these countries are forced into buying U.S. dollars. And the global excess liquidity can be created. So that's sort of a, so 
Personally, if you want to, if you want to get rich in this world, it's all about the, uh, 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 it's all about the buy low, sell high. <laughs> it's uh, now when you go to school, you say I we invest in uh, based on fundamentals. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked for 30 years. Even you look at it, you look at Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's extra performance is all from buy low and sell high. When there is a crash, he buys. <laughs> so so that's that's his extra performance. So this is sort of a so uh, if you if you didn't make money in this bubble. You have to wait for another one. That's how it works. <laughs> you pray, another bubble will come. Okay, so, so uh, that the uh, now how this uh, now how this world, world is going to end, and when we are going to have a normal world, I'm I'm I really uh, I'm I'm at a loss because that globalization is fundamentally, in my view, not sustainable. Because globalization is putting people who are very different together in one economy. Like East, in East Asia, people like uh, walk, 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 save, 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 right? And in the West, people walk a little, fun, fun, fun. Yeah, let's have a good time. So how you then now East Asia now is like a, a, a twenty-two some trillion dollars in the uh, in nominal GDP. The uh, the West is about uh, forty trillion dollars. But the East. The, uh, the East Asia savings a lot more than the West. So, in one global economy, what it means that East Asians will own everything in the West. That's, uh, that's how mathematics works. If one side saves more than the other side, eventually all the assets on the other side will be owned by the, by the other. How, could, how political is that possible? This force is only kept at bay by the story I told you about the US dollar. The, the, the Fed, and the, uh, is issuing extra dollars. So the, instead of uh, owning the assets in the West, the East Asians are holding these dollars. And, uh, and uh, the, the West does not feel the political implication of this difference between the East and the West. Because the, all these excess dollars, nobody feels the pain uh, in, in, in the West. So the, the, as long as that, uh, East and the West is so different, this tension will exist, will be there. Especially when China becomes much bigger than the United States. I think that the Chinese real economy is already much bigger than the United States. China's energy consumption is like 50% more than the United States. Electricity system is 50% bigger than the United States. Everything you talk about, like the automobile, like anything physical, China is much bigger than in the United States. The US is bigger because, uh, because of what? Because of the, uh, the, uh, the a haircut is cost $10. In China, the haircut costs $1. That's the reason why the US economy is bigger than the China's economy. So, uh, so the, the, uh, so the, this, this, this thing, uh, so eventually the East will become much bigger uh, than the West. So uh, I think that uh, the, uh, what I see is that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the West is becoming a destabilizing force. It's become, it's, you're going to see a lot of political uh, turmoils, turmoils in, in, in the West. You know, this is unfortunately uh, uh, a reality we have to live with for a long, long time. So for, uh, for like uh, emerging economies, I think the, the, uh, the key is to shift towards south-south trade, okay? How this world is going to continue to grow at a sustainable pace and economic development happens. In the past, the global the globalization or global trade was based on the wealth in the West. The wealth accumulated over centuries in the West supported the consumption and the demand for global goods. And uh, that supported the production in emerging economies. So that model was based on the, the wealth in the West. But you look at the wealth in the West has depleted a lot. Deficits, no cap, no investment. It means wealth, wealth is not growing or even declining. So, and, and that model is not sustainable. So over time, emerging economies have to trade among themselves. How could the poor people trade among themselves and become richer? That is the question, right? So this is where I see that uh, the most important thing in economic development is economies of scale. Through economy of scale, economy of scale efficiency can replace wealth for wealth creation. Okay. So this is where uh, the uh, 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 this China has a lot of problems. 
But China, one thing China has done right is economy of scale. And China, at the heart of the Chinese economy is economy of scale. This is from, it doesn't matter what you do, from infrastructure to manufacturing to urbanization. Think big. Donald Trump had one idea that worked out for him is think big. <laughs> so this is where I think that uh, no, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, I think for emerging economies, you cannot think small. You, can, you have to think big. If you're kind of a, a one who have a small scale and a production and you figure out how much money you're going to make next year because that, uh, uh, you, have, you supply 10 units you, so you can have a good price and you can make a profit, it doesn't work that way. You have to think about what the, the, the size should be 10, 20 years from today. Go for that. Then you don't make money in the short term. What do you do? You do whatever it takes. Maybe there's stock market bubble. You try to get some money to, to keep it going. So that is uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the East, uh, East Asian model. So this is where I think that uh, it's not a business as usual. And uh, everybody in emerging economy has to think differently. Uh, what has happened in the past cannot continue into the future. And the, uh, the uh, we have to chart our own economic uh, path. Uh, the most important thing is to have economy of scale. Focus on what you do. Like India, I, like 17, 17 years ago when the government invited me over, I, I, one advice I, I gave them was that, that uh, do things this big. So why don't you focus on make, creating like uh, 10 super cities? Like with 10 million people, uh, or 30 million people each. Then that's the economic development. And uh, it's not about uh, uh, everywhere. It's about a focus, economy of scale. And uh, so the, the, the backlash against uh, globalization in the West is not the end. It's not the end. There's another path going forward, especially for countries with a huge population like India. Go for economies of scale. And go for low price economy of scale economic development will happen.